uh, we will just see the introduction about the DC to DC converter. Uh, as the name indicates, the DC to DC converter, it converts DC at one level to DC at another level, or it converts a fixed DC voltage into a variable DC voltage. So we will have a fixed DC voltage here. Uh, we are giving that fixed DC voltage to the DC to DC converter, uh, which converts the fixer voltage into variable DC voltage. And this variable DC voltage can be used for many applications. Uh, this DC to DC conversion, it can be done in two ways. One is by using the linear converter and another is by using the switching uh, DC converter. Linear converters uh, are nothing but uh, we are doing the conversion with the help of the resist to drop. We'll be using a resist to variable resistance and we'll be adjusting the resistance to get the variable voltage. Whereas the switching converter, they use switches for the DC to DC conversion. This is a one, uh, uh, one step uh, conversion. And uh, with the linear converter, we'll be able to get only the step down operation. But with switching converter, we will be able to get both step up and step down operation. Uh, this is the overview of the DC to DC switching converter. As I said earlier, the switching converter, they are going to use the power electronic devices for their operation. Uh, the power electronic devices, they are going to act like a switching devices. And we will be giving a fixed DC voltage to the uh, converter circuit and we will be getting the variable DC voltage. And we can obtain both the step down and step up DC input voltage. That is, uh, in step down converter, if the input is 10 volt, for example, we'll be able to get the output voltage varying from 0 to 10 volts. And if it is a step up converter, then if it is the input is 10 volt, we'll be able to get the voltage ranging from 10 volt towards even infinite volt by adjusting the duty ratio duty ratio of uh, dc to dc converter it is nothing but the ratio of the on period of the switch to the total time period of the switch and the conversion uh, this type of conversion it is this is uh, done with a high switching frequency that is uh, we are uh, what is our aim is to get the variable dc voltage for that we will be switching on and off the switch which is we are using and the, uh, the frequency of turning on and turn off, it should be very high. Okay, why we are uh, using high frequency switching is that we have to, our aim is to reduce the ripple content in the output level. So the conversion is done at very high frequency. So that ripple content in the output will be less. And uh, uh, since uh, we are not having any uh, heat dissipation in the switching on and off, whereas in linear converter, uh, we'll be having the uh, uh, resist to drop, which in turn create the high uh, uh, loss in that resistance. So the conversion efficiency in case of switching converter, it will be less. And uh, it can also be operated in either non-isolated manner or in the isolated manner. The non-isolated mode is nothing but uh, there will be uh, an electrical connection between the input DC and the output DC in the non-isolated mode, which means that the load is directly connected to the low, uh, input DC uh, through the electrical mode or uh, with the physical connection. But in isolated mode, the load is not directly connected to the input, but they are coupled in the magnetic way. Okay, so your uh, load is uh, isolated from the input. Uh, so this is called the isolated mode. Why we need isolated mode of operation is in many applications, uh, we need to operate the load uh, in the isolated manner because the input may be very high voltage and very high uh, current range uh, we will be having. So in order to operate the load at the uh, in the safer manner, we need to isolate the load from the input side for which we'll be using the isolated mode of DC to DC converter. And uh, uh, the, the DC to DC convert, converter, it can handle the power varying from very low to high uh, value. The next slide. Uh, this slide talks about the uh, classification of your switching DC to DC converter. Uh, the switching DC to DC converter it is mainly uh, classified into two broad classes. Uh, one is hard switching and another one is soft switching. As uh, we have seen earlier that 
uh, we are going to operate the switches at a very high frequency uh, we, there will be switching losses in the uh, circuit since we are uh, turning on and turning off the switch uh, frequently there will be switching loss associated with the switch okay so uh, to reduce that switching loss or to eliminate that switching loss uh, we can use a soft switching technique which means that uh, so in if you don't use the soft switching technique then the during switching on and switching off uh, the current and voltage will experience uh, a, a, a wide ra range of increase and wide range of decrease okay so uh, during that time uh, the current will change rapidly and voltage will also change rapidly because of that more power loss will be there during the switching time so to reduce that losses uh, we we have to uh, either switch on or off the uh, devices either at zero voltage or at zero current which is nothing but soft switching converters in that we will be using some resonant components lnc components and we will be designing the lnc in such a way that the switch can be turned on either at zero voltage or turned off at either a zero voltage or zero current. So during turn on and during turn off, the device voltage can be either zero voltage or it can be zero. But whereas in hard switching converters, this is not the case. Uh, we will we'll not be using any resonant components to turn on or during the turn on and turn off. So uh, this is a hard switching uh, converter. Under hard switching converter, we also have two uh, types that is non-isolated converter and isolated converter. Uh, and in uh, which means that in non-isolator, uh, the, the load is directly connected to the input. There will be an electrical connection or physical connection between the input and the output. Whereas in isolated, the load is not directly connected to the input. There will be an uh, electrical isolation or physical isolation between the input and the output. And the output we are getting through the magnetic coupling. And under non-isolated converters, we have many types. Uh, depending upon the quadrants of operation, a DC to DC converter it is able to give you uh, any one of the four quadrants of operations, which means that the output voltage, depending upon the polarity of the output voltage and the output current, we can classify the quadrants of operation as first, second, third, and fourth, uh, third and fourth quadrants. Uh, so if the converter is able to give you only first quadrant operation wherein the output voltage and output current both are positive, then it is called as type A or class A converter. Whereas type B converter or class B converter, it is able to give you the uh, operation in the second quadrant. And your type C converter, it is a two quadrant converter, which will give you the operation in both first and the second quadrants of operation. And your type D converter is the converter which gives you the operation in both first and the fourth quadrants of operation. And the type E converter, which is class E converter, is a fourth quadrant converter where you will be able to get all the four quadrants of operation. You can operate the converter either in first quadrant, second, third, or fourth quadrants, depending upon your requirement. It, these converters will be mostly used in the uh, DC motor speed control, wherein we will be uh, able to get uh, the forward motoring mode, forward braking mode, reverse motoring mode, or reverse braking mode. All these four modes of operation, they are possible with type E converter, uh, so, which will be able to give you all the four modes of operation. And the other set of classification includes buck converter, boost converter, buck boost, cuck, uh, zeta, septic, and lure converter. Buck converter, it is nothing but a step down converter, DC to DC converter. So, which will be able to reduce the input voltage uh, to a low voltage. And your boost converter is nothing but the step up converter. Uh, which will increase the input DC voltage to a higher value. And your buck boost and shift converter, both are uh, able to provide you both a step down and step up operation. And these two converters, they will provide you the output voltage, which are the reverse of the input polarity. So they are also called as inverting uh, converters, inversion mode converters. And we have zeta and sepi converters, uh, they are also able to give you uh, the step down and step up operation, 
but these converters, the output will be uh, the same as the input polarity. Then if you see your LIVO converter, they are nothing but a series of boost converters. They will be able to give you the boost operation. And under isolated mode, we have uh, many types like a flyback, forward, uh, push-pull, and bridge converter. Flyback converter is a buck boost converter. The difference is that the inductor used in uh, the buck boost converter, it is split into, uh, uh, into a form to have a transformer-like structure. And this will be able to give you the buck boost operation. And uh, in the forward converter, it is nothing but in forward and the push pull converter, uh, there uh, will be a transformer which will be used. Uh, and that transformer, it will uh, increase or decrease the output voltage. And uh, that is dependent upon the transformation ratio of the transformer. And the bridge converters, it is nothing but it is going to use a bridge like structure to convert the DC. Uh, from one level to another and the bridge structure can be of full bridge type or it can be of half bridge type and the soft switching uh, converters they are again classified into zero voltage switching converter and zero current switching converter zero voltage switching means uh, during the switching on and switching off of operation uh, the voltage across the device will be kept zero and in zero current switching the current will be kept zero during this turn on and turn off of the switch Next, we will see the application, some of the applications of a DC to DC converter. There are many applications, uh, uh, some of the applications I have shown here. Uh, you can use your DC to DC converter for uh, PV arrays, uh, where in, uh, in PV arrays, this, the DC to DC converter, uh, they are used to provide you the constant output voltage. We all know that solar system, uh, the lighting, it is not uh, constant. It is intermittent in nature, you know. So uh, during uh, most uh, sunny days, it will give you more power, and during the rainy days or during the cloudy days, it will give you less power. So in order to maintain the output voltage of the PV system at the constant value, uh, we can use the uh, DC to DC converter. Mostly, boost converter will be used, which is going to maintain the output voltage at the constant required level. In addition to that, they can also perform the MPPT, that is, which is nothing but maximum power point tracking, uh, which is done for changing duty converter. It will be able to give you or it will uh, operate your solar panel uh, in such a way that it is, it is able to give you the maximum power that can be extracted from the solar. Uh, then if you consider the wind energy system, uh, again, uh, the wind energy system can be of two types, standalone and uh, grid connected wind energy system. In standalone wind energy system, the load will, you will be having the wind energy and will be having the load. And if the uh, load, we are not going to uh, use the load for 24 hours, in such a cases, the power which is being created, is, it can be stored in the battery uh, with the help uh, of the DC to DC converter. So for batteries, wind is also not on one and continuously available much, it's intermittent in nature. But for charging the battery, we need a constant voltage or constant current. So for that, uh, we'll be using the DC to DC converter, uh, which will provide you a constant uh, current for charging the battery. And the power which is stored in the battery, it can be later on used uh, when the wind is not available. And they can, the DC to DC converter, they are also used in the electrical vehicles. Uh, we all know uh, the any electrical vehicle, uh, we are increasing the electric motor, and, uh, which is being supplied from the battery. Uh, so from the battery, uh, in order to operate the electric motor at different speeds, or to accelerate the uh, speed, or to decelerate the speed during the braking time on the all, we need a variable DC voltage to achieve that will be using a DC to DC converter along with the battery uh, for uh, supplying the motor. And uh, we also be using a DC converter in fuel cell also. Uh, fuel cell, uh, it is not going to generate electricity with the help of the fuel. Mostly hydrogen and oxygen will be used. The fuel cell uh, be able to give you 
only uh, few uh, that's less voltage low voltage output voltage so in order to step up that voltage and in order to regulate the output power we need to use a dc to dc converter along with the source to bring a better performance to the fuel cell and the dc to dc converter they are also used in the mobile laptop the tabs and all because all these things they are using a battery within it uh, which is going to be charged so dc to dc converters they are provided with the charging uh, unit of your lab and everything so that it will be able to give you a constant dc voltage for them and it is also used in the battery management system uh, batteries technologies to provide a proper charging again it is going to provide you a regulated output dc voltage which will charge the battery uh, in a proper manner and again uh, we can also use the dc to dc converter in satellite yeah, applications also we all know that even in satellites we are using the uh, uh, the, the power supply for the uh, satellite communication it is being given by batteries associated with that uh in order to maintain the proper uh, charging of the battery and in order to give supply to the satellite communication uh, we will be using the dc to dc converter to uh, operate the light in the proper manner and it is also used in the uh, dc drives so uh, in order to uh, where uh, you will be using your dc motor and uh, conditions like variable speed application for variable speed applications and if you want to get the regenerative braking then it is better if you use your dc to dc converter so your re regenerative braking it is possible only if your speed of the motor uh, becomes more than the rated speed of the motor but with, when you use the dc to dc converter then the um, even uh, below the rated speed it is possible to get the Uh, regenerative braking operation uh, with the help of the type uh, b converter which is uh, where we are going to operate the converter in the second operation so we'll be able to get the regenerative braking mode so these are some of the applications not only these applications there are uh, there are many more applications uh, where you can use your dc to dc converter for uh, many applications then uh, for step down converter with the help of step down converter we will see how a dc to dc converter can uh, give you the variable output voltage so uh, we are going to uh, the main aim of the uh, switch mode dc to dc converter is to use a switch okay so a switch will be connected always between the input and the output okay so in the step down uh, dc to dc converter uh so the principle is explained with the help of that uh, so we will be having an input constant D, uh, dc input voltage and we will be having a load at the output in between these two we are going to just connect the switch okay when the switch is closed the load will be connected directly to the input and the, when the switch is opened the load will be disconnected from the switch and the when the load is connected to the uh, input voltage the output of uh, voltage that appear across the load will be equal to the input voltage when it is disconnected then the output voltage will be zero so if you see the output voltage waveform it will be of pulsed form it will not be a constant uh, voltage so this is the circuit for simple circuit for your step down converter uh, usually when you are using uh, your converter for stepping down and stepping up operation you will be also using the uh, lnc components to uh, suppress the ripple contents in the output uh, in order for better understanding i have shown just a simple circuit here uh, without any connection uh, without any filter components here uh now uh, here you have a dc input voltage and you have a load which is connected through a switch uh during the switch when when the switch is in the open condition uh, the load is disconnected from the source so the output voltage so no current will be flowing through the load so output voltage will be zero when the switch is closed then load is directly connected to the input voltage so the uh, current will be flowing through the load and the voltage across the load it will be just equal to your input voltage so these things i have explained with the help of a graph 
So when the switch is in the open condition, the first figure it shows the uh, left side figure shows the input voltage, which is at the constant value, and the input uh, DC voltage it is taken as a magnitude that is equal to Vs. And when the switch is in the open condition, there is no any output voltage present, which is shown in the right side of the figure. And and we are we are just turning on the switch at between zero to T on period. And we are keeping the switch in the on condition uh, for a duration of T on from zero to T on period. During that time, uh, if you see the output voltage waveform, which is shown in the right side, from zero to T on during the switch where, when it is closed, the output voltage it is just equal to the input voltage, which is Vs. And again, after T on, we are turning off the switch. So after T on, uh, you will have. Uh, the switch was kept open. Okay, so during that time, uh, there is no opposition in the right side of the waveform after T on. Again, after after T, your T capital T is nothing but the time period of the switch, and the time period of the switch is going to have two components: T on on period and the off period. And again, after the time period of the switch, we are turning on. After T, we are again turning on the switch. For a duration of so during that time you have your output voltage which is the same as your input voltage. So you can see that the constant DC voltage which is shown the side it is now converted into pulsed form of DC voltage which is shown in the right hand side. Also you keep on uh, uh, we will we'll be keeping it on until we get um, so that we will be getting a pulsed wave uh, DC voltage waveform. But this form of pulse DC voltage waveform it is not suitable for any application for which we will be using the LNC components to remove the ripple content in the output voltage and in the output current. Okay, now uh, after getting the pulsed output voltage waveform, we can write the average output voltage of the step down DC to DC converter. Uh, so usually. Yeah, when we derive the average output voltage, we will be taking the area of the uh, over a full cycle. So here the full cycle, the time period is capital T. So we are going to integrate the entire waveform over the period time, uh, time period, which is capital T. Okay, so the form for getting the average output voltage of any waveform is 1 by time period, integral 0 to time period. Uh, the uh, the voltage uh, voltage into we are going to integrate this uh, for, for for with respect to time. Okay, the average output voltage or average value of any waveform it is nothing but area over over a time period uh, divided by the time period will give you uh, area of the waveform over a time period divided by the time period will give you the average output voltage. So in order to get the area of the waveform, we are going to integrate the waveform equation of the waveform over the time period. So we are integrating V naught uh, uh, over a time period. Same slide, but I have to move uh, backward. Uh, this is the average output voltage which is obtained from the uh, output voltage waveform. Uh, so uh, for any voltage waveform or for any or, uh, AC waveform, so for any uh, form, uh, how to find the average output voltage is we have to just integrate the uh, um, integrate the waveform over a full uh, the time period and divide that with with the time period. So we create the voltage waveform over the entire time period, which is capital T, and uh, we are integrating V naught. Uh, so we can see from the waveform that uh, from zero to T on the output voltage is same as V S. So uh, it is time. So uh, you can see that get the Average output voltage, which is Vs T on by T. Now, this T on T it is nothing but of the on period of the switch to the time period of the switch, which is nothing but the duty ratio or duty cycle, so which is denoted as K here. Okay, so the average DC voltage it is equal to 
uh, Vs into D voltage. So for down converter, the average DC voltage will be proportional to the duty ratio. It will be duty ratio from zero to infinity, uh, from zero to one. Your K can be changed from zero to infinity. It is so finally. So you can take its value from zero to one. If your K is zero, then the average DC voltage will be zero. And if it is one, it will be uh, yes, so you can change the average voltage from the weight from the so, Since we can see that the output is the first form, it is chopped form in nature. Uh, we can also call the DC to DC converter, it is also called as DC chopper. And the output, and notice the output, the output voltage is of pulse form uh, so but the same form cannot be used in any application so remove the triple content in output voltage and uh, which is used as a filter to filter out all the different and the uh, and what are the control techniques how to get how to operate the switch uh, it can be used it can be done with the help of two uh, control techniques. One is the time ratio control, and another one is the current control. In time ratio control, we will have two types of control. Fixed frequency control, also called the pulse modulation. In fixed frequency control, the frequency uh, the control technique it can be of time ratio control and current limit control. Under time ratio control, we have fixed frequency control. Uh, which is also called the pulse width modulation control, wherein we will be keeping the switching frequency at the constant value or the time period it is kept constant. We need to change either the on period or the off period. So if you change either on or off period, both are going to change. The next method of control is the variable frequency control or it is also called as frequency modulation control, wherein the switching frequency it is, keep, it is uh, changing we have to either keep the on period at the constant value or the off period as, as the constant one. Uh, if you consider the variable frequency control, it will be, uh, since the frequency of operation, it is going to change uh, the, the design of filter circuit for the variable frequency control, it will be uh, difficult. The next method of control is the current limit control, wherein uh, we need to turn on and off the switch depending upon the current value. So if the load current reaches a minimum value, then we need to switch on the uh, device. And when it reaches the maximum value, uh, we need to switch on the device so that the current will try to decrease. And again, when it reaches the prescribed minimum value, again, we have to switch on the device. So here we need to have the uh, limits that is I minimum and I maximum. Uh, I minimum is nothing but the minimum uh, load current and I maximum is nothing but the maximum load current. We need to switch on, turn on and turn off the device uh, with the help of the minimum current and the maximum current value. And these are all some of the software that can be used to do the simulation of your power electronic circuits, uh, MATLAB, LT SPIES, then uh, we have PLX, then PSIM, then uh, ORCAD PSPIES. These are all some of the software which can be uh, used for uh, the simulation of the power electronic circuits. And uh, the, the software uh, MATLAB we are going to use to simulate the DC to DC converter. And I'm, I'm going to uh, show you the uh, uh, simulation of the buck converter for, with the help of the MATLAB Simulink environment. So uh, in the MATLAB, uh, there is an environment or there is a thing called Simulink, uh, which is MATLAB matrix is uh, that is matlab is nothing but a matrix laboratory uh, all the uh, simulation process and all the uh, thing they are they are going to take place with the help of matrix based language all your uh, analysis everything it is done with the help of ma uh, matrix so only it is called as matrix laboratory and uh, simulink is a uh, uh, graphical environment which is present in matlab uh, uh, software uh, that Simulink environment it is very user friendly. You can 
use this uh, environment to simulate all type of circuits not only the power electronic circuits all components all all your things they are inbuilt they are used as a inbuilt models in the simulink environment we can use the simulink to simulate all type of uh, circuits varying from um, electron that is signal in circuits to maximum power in circuits and we can even simulate the machines electrical machines uh, there are toolboxes available for control system dsp tv and wind and so many there are uh, they are available so this is a user friendly environment all your circuits can be uh, designed with the help of already existing uh, models or toolboxes which are available in this system okay so the, we are going to see uh, a simple demo of a buck converter uh, which is also called as buck regulator usually the dc to dc converters uh, it, it will be operated in the closed loop mode so that the output voltage we can achieve uh, as desired as our desired value uh, so for that uh, you will be using a control loop also so this is the buck converter uh, which is provided with the uh, closed loop operation uh, the output voltage of the buck converter it is uh, taken as the feedback and it is compared with the reference value of your uh, uh, voltage desired voltage and it is given to a control circuit within the control circuit you will be having some controller pi or any controller and the output of that controller it will be dependent upon the error value which is nothing but the uh, difference between the reference voltage and the actual voltage and it is going to give an input to the uh, gating circuit uh, where your gate pulses will be generated that can be given to the switch uh, and based on the gate pulses produced the switch can be turned on and off so that uh, this process will continue until you reach the desired voltage magnitude this is the closed loop circuit of the buck converter uh, buck converter it is going to have the input voltage and it is the the switch which uh, we have shown here is the mosfet switch you can use any switch uh, uh, either uh, mosfet or bjt or thyristor or gto any switch you can use if you are going to use the buck converter for low or medium power application then you can use mosfet or igbt for high power application you can use the uh, thyristors and if you are using a thyristor then you need to use a, a forced commutation circuit uh, because the input voltage is dc the resistor will not turn uh, is the input voltage so in order to turn off at the desired time you need to provide a forced commutation circuit uh, then you have a diode that diode is nothing but the freewheeling diode and you have lnc components to filter out the ripple contents in the output voltage and the same circuit we can we can construct with the help of the MATLAB. Uh, and uh, see the modes of operation in the buck converter. You have mode one during the turn on period and mode two during the off period of the switch. In the mode one, uh, which is nothing but during the turn on period, you can write the inductor voltage. Uh, we all know the voltage for the inductor will be dl into dil by dt current that is change in inductor current by the change in time. Okay, so if you apply a KVL equation for this uh, circuit, the voltage across the inductor, it will be uh, the voltage Vs minus V0. Uh, and the change in current divided by change in time, uh, during the uh, time that is 0 to T on, the change in current is nothing but uh, we, are, we have taken it as del I, where del I is nothing but the maximum I max minus the minimum current I minimum during the turn on period the inductor current it is going to rise from a minimum value i minimum to the maximum value i maximum so during that uh, on period of the switch the change in current del uh, it is uh, denoted as del i which is equal to i max minus i minimum and the time uh, the, the change in time it will be t on so l into del i by t on it will be equal to vs minus p naught and from this we can also write uh, the t naught it can be written as as we have already seen the duty ratio is t on by t from which you can write t on as k times uh, capital t so l into del i by kt it is equal to vs minus v naught so from which we can get the ripple current del i it is equal to vs minus v naught into kt divided by l 
and let us name this equation as equation number one. And during the mode two, uh, again uh, in the mode two, we will be turning off the switch, uh, and during that time, the diode will be turned on. Uh, and during this time, if you write the KVL equation uh, for this inductor, your VL it will be equal to it is again L into the IL by dt that is equal to just the output voltage but with the reverse polarity so it is minus v naught and during this time the current it is going to change from uh, i maximum towards i minimum so change in current will be i minimum minus i maximum so it is taken as minus del r and the change in time will be t off so this is the off period of the uh, mode so it is t off so l into minus del i by t off is equal to minus v naught so l into minus del i and this t off it can be written as t minus t on so you can write it as 1 minus k into capital t so if you substitute that you will get the ripple current del i which is equal to v naught into 1 minus k into capital t by l uh, and uh, we will uh, name this equation as equation number two okay now we are going to take uh, one and two uh, so, in order to get the output voltage expression V0, so Vs minus V0 kT by L is equated to V0 into 1 minus k into T by L. So, from which we can get the output voltage, average output voltage V0 as k times Vs. Okay, similarly, with the help of the del I, and we, know, we can also find the real uh, voltage of the same. Ripple capacitor voltage and with the help of the ripple uh, current expression, we can obtain the uh, design equations for the L and C components, filter components which are used in the circuit. So, your filter inductor value it is dependent on your uh, ripple current and your filter capacitor it is dependent on the uh, uh, ripple voltage. So, L is uh, equal to Vs into k, k times 1 minus k divided by f is nothing but the switching frequency and divided uh, into uh, del i and the switching capacitor c it will be vs k divided by 8 f times del p okay so for for uh, designing l and c components first we have to fix our values of del uh, i and del p what should be our ripple current and what should be our ripple voltage we have to fix that and after fixing up that, we also need to fix the values of the switching frequency and the duty ratio. After that, uh, we can design the values of L and C. And uh, with those values, if you simulate the circuit, then uh, uh, before going to the uh, practical implementation or real-time implementation of your converter, you can just simulate your circuit with the help of any simulation uh, software tool. So, and once if, if the working is proper with the simulation, then you can go for the uh, real time uh, implementation of your entire circuit. So for this thing, I have taken the uh, parameters for L, C, R and F, K. Uh, uh, they are taken like this. L value I have taken it as 0 0.01 Henry and C is this one. And uh, R is taken as 10 ohm. And frequency, switching frequency have taken it as 1 kilohertz and the um, duty ratio is taken as 50%. And this circuit I have constructed with the help of the MATLAB software and uh, I'll just show, show you uh, the, uh, the converter circuit which I've already uh, built with the MATLAB. So this is the MATLAB window. In the MATLAB window you have to Go for the simulate like is is my MATLAB window visible? It's visible. Okay. Uh, in the MATLAB window, you have to just open your simulant library browser. Then after that, uh, you have to click on all the construct the uh, buck converter. So this is your uh, simulant library browsers. Here there are many components that are available. In the uh, library browser, you need to take all the components for uh, constructing your DC to DC buck converter. Uh, so those components, it will be available in Simscape. Uh, 
so this is a window called simscape under which you have many things here and all your required components it will be available in simpower system toolbox under which you have a specialized technology under which you have all these things from these things you have to uh, use all the you have to take the components that are all needed for constructing the muck converter so you here you have all the components like power electronic Aaron, you have all your devices varying from thyristor and uh, you have igbt you have diode mosfet everything and you have the measurement in measurement you, are, you have many uh, measuring uh, units like current measurement voltage measurement uh, three phase bi measurement multimeter everything and you can use uh, these things for measuring the voltage and current and you can you, you also have machines like uh, synchronous machine, asynchronous machine, uh, DC machine, everything it is available. And we will also have the electrical sources under which we have all the sources varying from three uh, single phase to uh, three phase. DC sources also available, controlled voltage source and controlled current source it is also available. So we will be using all these components to construct the DC to DC converter. Uh, I've already constructed the uh, converter. So I'll just sh show you this uh, circuit. Uh, so you have to just uh, drag those components to this uh, model uh, here. See, actually, for constructing the model, you have to go to the file and you have to take new model. So once you uh, click on this, you will be having the window uh, with untitled. And you have to uh, take all the components which are all required for the construction of buck converter. For this case, we need MOSFET. And uh, we need diode also we have in the circuit. So we can take MOSFET and diode. Then uh, electrical sources, we can have DC voltage uh, for input DC voltage. And we need uh, our L and C components, uh, which will be available in the elements. So in the elements, so there are many uh, elements that are available. Uh, we need to take the series RLC branch and if you double click on that, uh, you have the facility to choose which type of uh, element you need. We need uh, inductor and you can, uh, it is uh, one millihenry is the default value. You can change the value to your desired value. And we need uh, two more components. One is for C and uh, one is for the load. So just we can copy it and we can paste it. And we, if we can rotate the element with the help of control R. And here we can change to C. And uh, the value of the uh, inductor, value of the capacitor, which we have used is 0 0.006. Uh, so we just click on, double click on this, and we can just change this value to this. And we can just again copy this element and we can double click on this and we can change uh, the element to resistance and the resistance value which we have taken is 10 ohms. So we can change this and just we can connect all the things just you can drag and connect all the uh, components as given in the circuit. Okay, this diode we can rotate it using control r or you can also have the option if you double double click uh, if you right click on this you have an option to rotate and flip and you can just connect all the components to the circuit after connecting all the components you can you have to give a gate pulse to the uh, MOSFET for which uh, you need to give a pulse generator that pulse generator it will be available in the uh, Simulink uh, window uh, where you have the sources. In the sources, you can choose the pulse generator, your pulse generator tool uh, box, and you can connect it. So, in the pulse generator, the amplitude, these are all the default, default values. You can keep the amplitude as such. Time, this is the time period of the switch in which you have to uh, you have to give one divided by 1000 
and a pulse width since the duty ratio which we have taken as uh, 50%, so 50% duty ratio we are given. Okay, so the entire thing after simulation, uh, you can, I have already constructed the circuit uh, which I have done earlier. Uh, here, uh, I have connected the, in the same manner and to measure the output voltage, and to measure the output voltage, uh, uh, we need to measure the output voltage, we need a voltage measurement, uh, which is available in the measurement, which is available in the measurements. Uh, so from this, you have to take the voltage measurement and you can connect the scope. Your scope is available. The scope is available in the uh, sinks. From, from this, you can drag out the scope, so which is nothing but uh, similar to a, a CRO. So if you run the simulation, if you run the simulation, uh, you will be able to get, sorry, it is, uh, it is not over, it is running. So once the simulation is over, uh, you can view the output voltage waveform. I have just connected only voltage measurement here. Uh, so only voltage waveform it is uh, coming up here. So this is the voltage waveform. So likewise, uh, you can uh, do the simulation in your MATLAB for any kind of circuit, which is very, very user friendly. And you can see the voltage value, current value, or any other parameter if you want to see, you can see. Uh, so this is the <clears throat> thing which we have, I've already obtained for input voltage, output voltage, and inductor current. And uh, same thing, this simulation I have done for uh, open loop, uh, which means that if I change the load, or if I change the input voltage, then the uh, output voltage will change. It will not uh, remain at the required value. So for that, we need to go for the closed loop simulation where you have to take your output voltage and you have to uh, compare this with your reference. And you have to give an, uh, you, have, you have to use the controllers and you have to uh, generate uh, with the help of a PID controller and uh, the output of the PID controller, it will be uh, it will be not matching with the uh, gate circuit required for gate pulse required for the MOSFET. So you will be using a relay to uh, give a gate pulse to your MOSFET. So the entire circuit it will be simulated. If you do the simulation, even if you experience any change in the input voltage or if you experience any change in the output load your output voltage will will remain at the desired value now we'll see the evolution of dc to dc converter before the invention of dc to dc converter these are the things which you which were used to convert the uh, input dc fixed dc voltage into variable dc voltage the first one is the vibrators uh, they are going they are nothing but the electromechanical device uh, that convert the input DC fixed voltage into pulsed voltage. And the, they were used for very low power applications. And we also have dynamo motor, dynamo motor, uh, which is nothing but the motor generator set. Uh, the, these arrangements, they were used in the mobile radios, that is uh, mobile radios where uh, the, the radios were, were used in the mobile devices, like buses, everything. Uh, so where you will be having a motor and generator set, uh, the motor generator set, it will be coupled to the, um, they are coupled as a single unit and they'll be fixed on the uh, wheels of the uh, mobile uh, van or anything. So when your van is rotating, then it is going to generate the power, which that power, it can be used to uh, power your radio. So this is your dynamo. Then we, uh, after that, uh, we had a, a voltage divider uh, in which it is nothing but a potentiometer where you will be giving uh, at constant DC voltage to the potentiometer, which is nothing but a, uh, a resistor, variable resistors connect, uh, resistor connected between uh, the input DC and you can have an arrangement to change the value of the resistance. If you change the value of resistance, you will get the uh, variable DC voltage. 
so after the evolution of dc to dc converter uh, there are many topologies which are coming out now uh, so initially we had first generation uh, or traditional converters and uh, then they are called the first generation converters then we had second generation converters in which we had uh, multi quad converters then third generation converters in which we have switched component converters then in the fourth generation we have soft switching converters then we have in the fifth generation we have synchronous rectifier converters then in sixth generation we have multi element resonant power converters and in the first generation which are nothing but the traditional converters these are all the converters that are coming under the traditional first generation converters uh, like fundamental circuits uh, like a buck boost buck boost everything then the next generation it will uh, that is next to that fundamental circuit we have new chuk sepik everything and we also have transformer transformer type converters and which we have forward flyback push pull zeta everything and we have voltage lift super lift and ultra lift lower converters and in the multi quadrant converters in the second generation we have transformer type converter Uh, which are uh, developed for the multi quadrant uh, lua converter and in the third generation in switch uh, component converters we have uh, two and four quadrant switch con uh, switch component lua converters then we have switch inductor converter and under under which we have transformer type uh, four quadrant switch inductor lua converter uh, uh, these two things comes under the switch inductor converter then in the fourth generation uh, soft, soft switching converter which uses v zero current and zero voltage uh, switching uh, techniques uh, so we have zero current switching quasi resonant converter and we have zero voltage switching quasi resonant con converter and we have uh, zero uh, uh, ztc converter which is nothing but a single to four quadrant zero transition uh, converter and we have synchronous rectifier converter Uh, in the fifth generation which is nothing but uh, switching uh, resonant uh, rectifier converter uh, which includes uh, either a flat transformer src or actic clamp circuit double uh, and uh, double current src then we have multi element resonant power converter which is uh, nothing but the sixth generation converters uh, which consists of uh, two elements uh, three elements a, it is connected as pi uh, model or four elements which can be of uh, double gamma and reverse double gamma um, converters and what are all the job opportunities that are available if you learn dc to dc converter in the proper manner so as i said earlier in the applications uh, the it, it is a major uh, requirement for the electrical vehicle is the dc to dc converters since uh, all your uh, companies automobile companies they are trying to manufacture the electric vehicles uh, if you learn the dc to dc converter in the proper manner and how to use them in the electric vehicles then there are more opportunities that are available in the automobile industries and again in the electric vehicle the next challenging field is the battery uh, management system and how to charge the battery in a uh, less time so for that also Uh, there are researches going on with the dc to dc converter and if you are uh, able to pro, uh, know the operation of the dc to dc converter and if you could operate them in the proper manner then uh, we can do wonders with the ma battery management system and we can how how can we reduce the charging time of the battery that thing if you are familiar then there are more opportunities with that and many researches are going on with the dc to dc converter because there are many wide applications with dc to dc converters so if if you have uh, if you are uh, having uh, more interest with that you can do more research and you can contribute those things for the industry and all and renewable energy sectors as i mentioned in the applications it is widely used in pv and wind not only in these two it is also used in fuel cells also i as i told earlier so we are more um, most of the uh, energy sectors they are now going to uh, they are having the plan of using uh, the renewable energy with uh, with them 
so if you learn uh, all the dc to dc converter in the proper manner you will be able to get more jobs in the renewable energy sectors too and the smart grid and micro grid technologies they are also they are using the renewable energies and more uh, that is uh, they um, smart grid and micro grids they are going to use uh, it is nothing but the ordinary grid interconnection of um, uh, ordinary grid and the uh, information and technology uh, so which is going to use dc to dc converters for various things like power factor correction all uh, the the voltage regulation for uh, power factor correction and the real and the active power uh, correction for that you need to use dc to dc, DC converter then uh, the power supply design all your uh, power supplies varying uh, from mobile charging to uh, the high power applications and all they need dc to dc converter where which can be used in the power supply so if you are able to design the power supply with the help of the dc to dc converter uh, you have more jobs in that line and in power and energy sectors again uh, for power factor correction and for uh, uh, for uh, illuminating the harmony components all these things they we need to use dc to dc converter hvdc transmission wherein your output old, that is uh, the generation power it will generation voltage will be transferred uh, uh, will, will be converted into high voltage and it will be transmitted over the transmission line high voltage range uh, in order to avoid more losses for that you will be using the dc to dc converters so which also needs the experts for uh, designing the dc dc converters for the power and energy sectors so these are the some of the job opportunities that are available for you uh, with this i am completing my presentation.